Atmanamaste. Atmanamaste. All right. Let me just go live. Get this all there. Okay, so uh, I wanted to let you know that uh, all the recordings that we have at this point will be on Vimeo only till the 25th of September, right? So you have another three weeks for those of you who want to go back and review the videos. Good luck uh, with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you and your friends who want to, right? Uh, we're having some issues with Vimeo. So 25th of September would be the last day. I presume India time, <laughs> not necessarily US time. I think not. they've uh, realized we're doing complete pesa vasool of their membership. <laughs> <laughs> Indians. <laughs> oh my God, this is getting recorded. Oh, All right. Sorry, Vimeo. Sorry about that. So, you make full use of. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, so let's start off with today's session. Yes, uh, kindly close your eyes, connect down to the palate. Let's inhale and exhale. Let's align ourselves to what we want to do right now, to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokok, Sri Lord Maha Guruji Mele, to all the great ones, to the great teachers of light, knowledge, wisdom, to the great teachers of education, to the beings and masters of theosophy, the angels and beings of communication, our respective Wi-Fi's and our internet connections to our soul and divine self, we humbly invoke for your great, great blessings, for your divine guidance, for your light, for your love, for your mercy, for your divine guidance. Give us the ability to have an open and clear mind, to have a deeper understanding of your priceless teachings. To put this in perspective with all that we've learned earlier, especially from our teacher, Grand Master Chua, and use it to become better instruments and to make this world a better place. We humbly offer ourselves as instruments to do your work. Let thy will be done, not the urges of our lower nature. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Atman Namaste again. Welcome to our study session. It's been three months we're doing the book. Only three months? Yeah, exactly three months, right? <laughs> June 1st, to we started. I, I can't remember, actually. Where, when did we start? Do you remember? June. June 1st uh, week, right? Monday. June. Okay, so that way it's three months. Okay. Yeah, June first. So. So let's move on. Um, <laughs> bedding grass, right? The talisman. So the bedding is over. Yeah. Okay. You were talking about all that. So let's move on to. For some reason, it shows that in my. So I was wondering. So we're going to move on to talisman. Yes. Last time we did talk about it. Yes. Uh, can you? Um, so when you talk about a talisman, the process of how this talisman actually works, they said the method of deliberately manufacturing a talisman. So you've got to remember that the talisman needs some kind of an object. It could be a metal, it could be glass. So whatever object you have, that object, when you place it in your hand, right? So say, I'm going to use this. It needs to be cleansed ethically, right? And so they say what you do is with the pure will, Yes, and etheric matter, like uh, you know, like like a like a container of etheric matter. You kind of move this metal or object that you want to create later as a talisman. It needs to be purified and cleansed, right? And so it says uh, through a film. Now, a film is way too thin uh, with reference to etheric matter. So I would suggest something a little thicker. You pass through it uh, purely with the effort of will to cleanse this particular object that you're going to be using for the talisman. So what happens with this is all all etheric energy that is connected to the talisman is then removed. Yes. And as you remove this old matter, they say here immediately ordinary etheric matter or ether that surrounds this object will then replace that which you moved or removed from that part of the object. And as soon as that is done, uh, this can then be used, all right? Before that, there's one more process. But anyway, uh, they also explain here that uh, when, when you look at the etheric pressure, yes, uh, around the object, there is actually etheric pressure, somewhat corresponding to, though immediately, uh, sorry, immensely greater than atmospheric uh, pressure. 
So they say there is certain kind of pressure around the object, yes, and this corresponds to you. You have atmospheric pressure, but it's it's much more uh, intense compared to that, right? So the the most important thing is you need to clean out whatever object is that you're going to use as a talisman with etheric matter with the intention to clean it out. So once you've done that, you use the same process to also clean it astrally and mentally. If you've done muscle choice, psychic cell defense, you have an easier method to do all this. Pranic healers, you already know what to do in pranic psychotherapy when there is uh, dirty energy and when there is energy that is uh, affecting the astral and mental body or the emotions and the thoughts. Once this is done, that object becomes like a clean sheet on which you can now record whatever you want. Right. And so in pranic healing, this is called programming. So you can put according to what you want, a different program into that talisman. Normally it's used for protection. Right. And so the talisman is then uh, this clean, clean, etheric, astral uh, and mental object is now ready for use by you based on what you want. And so they say that um, the operator, that is you and me, who's, who is actually creating the talisman may place his right hand. Yes your right hand on the object. So if this was my object, then I place my right hand on or over the object and um, fills himself with the particular qualities that he wants to impart into the talisman. And then uh, as he does this, he wills that those qualities, yes, whatever it is, basically the program is then passed through his hand into the talisman. And so as that energy moves from the operator, or the person creating this talisman, right? That program through the, uh, through the ability of will goes into the etheric matter, astral and mental matter of the talisman, right? And experience occult, um, he can actually perform this whole process immediately, right? Instantaneously because of his strong uh, effort of will. But others, it might take some time, right? And so when Masucho programs something, where, whether it is uh, the Great Invocation poster or something, he might take to, I, I remember when he charged the uh, Great Invocation poster at uh, the MG Road office in Bangalore, he had 50,000 posters and he did it in a matter of maybe, I don't even think it took 10 minutes, right? Now, when you and I, who are crystal healers and psychic cell defense students, when we try to even do the breathing, <laughs> we take sometimes more than 10 minutes for all the 10 crystals or 14 crystals we have, right? So obviously, as you evolve, um, as you practice more, then that expertise allows you to then do the same process really quickly, almost instantaneously, is, that, is what is mentioned here. The above would constitute one of so there are different classes of talismans, right? So we're going to quickly look at the different classes of talisman and then we'll hand it over to Amit. So what are they saying? So you have what we're talking about right now, where you cleanse it and, you know, you put something through will and give it the qualities that it requires is called what you and I would say a general talisman. Yes, a talisman that is uh, very generic. There's nothing specific to it. Uh, of course, there is protection probably with it. Then they talk about the second type, which is the adapted ta talisman. It is one specially charged, right, to meet the requirement of the individual. So when you give that talisman to someone, based on the need of that individual, the person who needs it, then you kind of make it specific to their needs, right? And so they talk about it like going to a GP, a general practitioner for medicine, and then going to a specialist for something else, right? And so the, the program is specialized based on the need of the individual. Whereas a generic talisman, you might just get it in a temple, um, you might get it in different places. So I remember when I went to uh, the tiger's nest in Bhutan, uh, the monk there actually gave us a talisman and there was something inside it and he said, you can share it with your family members. So I brought it back home and shared it with you Anand and Noel. Yes, I Would did. I eat it or was yes, it Yes, it was supposed to be consumed. Yes, it was edible. Edible talisman. No, no, no. What was inside the talisman? And it was like a little metal, uh, you know, elongated uh, tube. And inside it, there were other things. So you get those lollipop necklaces or sugar necklaces and stuff, right? Those... We can do that. We can ask Amit to uh, consecrate them. And <laughs> each of you can get one, hopefully by courier. Then when you're sleeping, ants will come and start chewing on your Well, they will get the quality inside <laughs> your talisman. All right. 
So let's move on. So then that is adapted to the requirement of the individual, right? So that's the second one. The third one is the ensold talisman, right? The talisman that, uh, and this is designed in two ways. And so let's look at this. So basically, uh, there are two varieties of this and they can last for centuries for a very, very, very long time. So let's look at the first method and then we go to the second one. So uh, basically, if you look at it, they say uh, in the first one, they place in the talisman a fragment of higher mineral. So the first one is where mineral is used. So they use this mineral, right, which throws out a ceaseless stream of particles. So you've got to remember that mineral, uh, basically precious or semi-precious stones, for example, they have their own ability to radiate energy to a certain level. Yes, and so it emanates by itself a certain radius. Uh, remember, we were talking about the radiatory field of a person. Uh, even the gemstones, especially high quality ones or higher minerals have the same ability. Whether it's shaped or if it's raw, it doesn't matter. As long as it's from that higher grade, it is going to have this impact of then radiating. And so these particles become charged with the force of whatever program you put into the talisman. So the talisman by itself is powerful. But in the, in the powerful talisman, you put this high mineral or a, or a gemstone. And then what comes out of the gemstone is impregnated with the program of the crystal. Yes, and so it continues to then do your work for a longer time. The actual work of distribution being then done by the mineral, yes, or the gemstone, thereby greatly, uh, there's, uh, there's going to be uh, the effect of the energy becomes more economical for the person creating the talisman, right? So the gemstone becomes like its assistant and it, it becomes easier then for that person to continue to use it. The second variety is where it is so arranged that uh, it, it actually allows these undeveloped nature spirits to actually get into it. The manifestation of one, sorry, the manifestation of one of certain classes of undeveloped nature spirits, right? So what they do is the second variety is one in which the ingredients are so arranged to make it a means, yes, to manifest this uh, lower developed nature spirit. Now the nature spirit is quite happy to be in the talisman. Yeah, so don't worry. It's not like we've, we've caught it from out there and we've put it in a cage. No. So they actually put the ingredients required for it and probably that's what it likes. And so it survives through that. And this later provides uh, the necessary force. Yes. For again, uh, to disseminate the influence from that program in the talisman. Such talismans may last for thousands of years. Yes, in the intense delight, remember they're super happy, in the intense delight of the nature spirit. So they can stay in that talisman for thousands of years. They're super happy with their place of residence, no issues at all. And there is a great benefit to all who approach and get magnetized by it. Yes. Now, that is the third one. The fourth one and the last one I'm going to talk about is the linked talisman, right? Which means obviously there are two people at least involved. And so it is one so magnetized as to bring to, uh, to the other a close rapport, to bring to the other, especially the maker, a person or uh, a being, right? So what happens is when there is a linked uh, talisman, it magnetizes to bring close, yes, uh, anybody or anything that the maker wants. And so they say there becomes a kind of outpost of his consciousness. So normally, obviously, the talisman is usually worn by human beings. And so when that talisman is linked to the maker, the maker, through that link, right, through that talisman link, he can actually send messages if he wants, because his consciousness, he can actually use through that link to reach the other, wherever he or she is. The wearer of the talisman could thus, through this link that he has, if they, he is in danger, can actually cry out for help. And therefore the maker can actually receive this message and realize the other is in danger. Such, um, sorry, the, sorry, the wearer of the talisman could thus through his link cry for help. Yes, cry for help uh, from the builder and the builder could, or the builder could direct a stream of influence uh, through it to the wearer of the ring or the talisman. 
Such a talisman would facilitate what Christian scientists call absent treatment. Yes, and so even though the person, uh, say a healer gives a, a program, a program crystal to the patient says, please take this, you know, and, and take, uh, take it home and place it there so it can protect you or it can heal you. When the patient does that, even though the healer is absent, even distantly, that patient or that person can continue to be protected or healed, right? So that's what they're talking about. So in psychic self-defense, you know what this uh, linked talisman is. Yes, in psychic self-defense, especially when you use crystals. Um, you, you and I don't actually put nature beings into the, the uh, talisman, but we do know that high quality of minerals, right? The crystals that you use even for healing uh, are very, very effective and can be used for a very long time. Uh, generations can use the same crystal to help heal others, right? So these are the four types. So you have the first one, which is the generic one, the second one, which is the adapted one, uh, the third one, which is the uh, ensold one, ensold either by mineral or by uh, a nature being, and the last one is the linked talisman, right? So these are the four types of talismans that we spoke about. Um, and I'll just end with this last one. So in rare cases, a physical talisman may also be connected to a very highly evolved being, the causal body of an adept, as they put here. And uh, as was done with those talismans buried, yes, in various parts of the country by, I'm not sure who he is, Apollonius, Apollonius of Tiana, yes, about 1900 years ago. That's a very, very long time. And what he did is, because he buried these talismans in those respective areas in that country, in order that the force may radiate out of it, uh, this actually becomes the place or centers of great events in the future. So obviously, it has a radiatory field, and when people come there, they realize there's something special about it. And, and therefore, because of this tal talisman that resides deep in the earth, people start to recognize the energy there and start to create things. And so some of these centers have already been utilized, whereas others are still, are still not discovered, right, and remain there, which will be used in the future, yes, uh, with the work connected with the coming of the world teacher or the Christ or the Krishna or the future Buddha, right? And so these talismans have also been used to prepare places or points uh, of energy which are effective. Yes, which will be effective for spiritual um, changes and definitely in the future with the coming of uh, the Lord Christ. Yes. And so there are different types of talismans and we'll hand it over to Amit and then I'll come back. Um, okay, so the method of deliberately manufacturing a talisman is at first, it starts off well and then it doesn't give us any answer, does it? Uh, so first you have to thoroughly cleanse the object of its present etheric matter, but they don't tell you how to cleanse it and uh, what to do with the garbage and, you know, what you're mowing. So all these, you know, are factors that you need to consider. Um, now, when they say um, removing it through a film of etheric matter, it's like a UV light, you know, like a thin film, it's very subtle. Okay, and uh, which has been created for the purpose by an effort of will. When they use the word will, uh, again, it's not really will, it's intention. It's intention, right? Uh, you intend to remove it. And the old etheric matter of magnetism has that been removed and the ordinary, uh, now this is good, this is good, uh, but just it's a preview for the next paragraph because if you just remove the etheric, you're not removing the astral matter, the thoughts and emotions that are engraved into the object. You're just removing the dirty energy or the psychic, dirty psychic energy or congested energy that the object has picked up, either from the previous wearer or from just lying around uh, and being passed around. All right. Um, and this one, and then you energize it with ordinary ether of the surrounding atmosphere. Now, I don't know whether that would happen. Um, I don't know if there is a, yes, there is a concept of vacuum and everything. But there's no guarantee that the energy coming in would be clean. And uh, because, and there's no, uh, there's no mention whether, like for in our case, we have a mechanism 
uh, through our energy system where we pull in energy, but we don't know whether inanimate objects pull in energy like the way human beings or uh, sentient beings do. Yeah, so, you know, we don't know. So I don't know how this works. This would be interesting to experiment where I'll just clean something and leave it around and see what happens to it. Most likely, I don't think much would happen. Um, and this type of technique would be good for just strengthening the aura. It would not be good for protection per se, because you're just cleaning it of uh, uh, physical etheric matter and you're putting in etheric matter. So when you apply it to your body, your, uh, the vibration of your etheric matter will increase. That's how a talisman protects you. So a talisman protects you by strengthening your aura. You see, if your aura is five inches, and another person's aura is five inches, the person sends you a negative thought or the person sends you a certain energy, it can penetrate. Or maybe the person's aura is eight inches. Then definitely the thought form that they're sending is because the thought form comes out of their aura. So the bigger the aura, the more powerful the thought form. To a certain extent, we'll explain the two parts that's required. But if you pair a talisman filled with highly charged uh, etheric matter and your aura is increased by 100%, so it becomes 10 inches or 20 inches, and then the person from five inches sends it to you, it's like creating additional barrier so that uh, the, it, the, it's not easy to penetrate or the act of aggression or whatever energy that's coming towards you will not affect you as much because it's like, you wanna make it so strong that it's like uh, a, a person throwing a stone at a giant, right? It doesn't affect them to a certain extent, right? So, but this one, since there's no other program but just etheric, when you put it on your body, the amount of etheric matter, now how you, how you add the etheric, all that has not been mentioned. But when you put it on your body, the amount of etheric energy overall would increase, thereby making other uh, dirty energy, for example, uh, difficult to penetrate. And even if it does penetrate, the body will flush it out easily because there's more than enough etheric reserve for it to flush out. Compared to if you have less energy and you're weak and tired, so it's, uh, and then you're using that as a battery to, to do the work that you're body supposed to do okay um, similar process is then affected for astral and mental matter okay so they're talking about the same thing so first you clean it etherically then astral then mental mm. the object thus becoming as it were a clean sheet on which may write as one wills how do you write it no idea the operator places his right hand okay that's how you do it right and fills himself with the particular qualities which he wishes to convey to the talisman and he wills now when you fill yourself with particular qualities that is creation of a thought form that is creation of a thought form okay uh, and uh, which we wish to convey to the talisman and wills that those qualities shall flow into it so basically you just transfer the thought form into it um, so you think about it then you think about it in there Okay, maybe we shouldn't give you the exact technique, right? Anyway, so the, um, an experienced uh, occultist. Okay, anyway, race. <laughs> it's not the full thing anyway. It's not the full thing. Okay, anyway, so an experienced occultist uh, can perform the whole process almost instantaneously by a strong effort of will. Now, what is the difference between in the first paragraph effort of will and a strong effort of will what is the difference you say will strong effort of will and that's not the difference okay what it means that's why some of the words sometimes used in theosophy can be misleading and confusing not because of because the author doesn't know it because of the vocabulary in those days and how it was used and how we use the vocabulary today also and uh, maybe because of some dilution in teachings um, but when they say almost the whole process is almost instantly done, in, instantaneously done by strong effort of will, it means the thought form is extremely clear. You see, to make a powerful program and talisman, you need two things. You need the energy aspect and you need the form aspect. The energy aspect comes from somewhere. <laughs> the form aspect comes from your clarity of thought. The clearer the thought, the more powerful it is. Do you remember we spoke about the thought form with the pip -pip -pip and the Archie comic and the jalebi and everything? So the clear the thought, as in I did yeah, yeah. yeah. So so um, so in the previous sessions. So the clearer the thought, the more powerful the programming will be. 
okay? Clarity of thought. Now, most people, when you tell them what do you want, they don't have clear thoughts. They're not able to think clearly. Number one, because they have inner noises, they're not been meditating and purifying themselves. So what is the difference between you and a saint? Number one, he doesn't have garbage in the inner aura. There are no, you, you know, the, the thoughts and emotions have been cleaned and uh, the aura is extremely clean. Because the aura is extremely clean, the thought form produced will also be clean. So it's not about just knowing what you want. It's about the ability to produce a clear thought form. Now, this can get very complicated, so I'll just uh, skip it. But, <laughs> you know, if you've made a mistake before, uh, you think back when you're under stress. They say, okay, come on, let's make a decision. You know, if you're a boss or you're under, uh, you know, your subordinates are telling you, okay, uh, you know, we, this is the problem. Let's do it. It's, it's in a hurry. And you make the decision. And then you're smart, you're sharp, but then at that moment, you made a decision and that decision was the wrong decision. And you look back, you're like, how come I made, it's such a stupid decision. You know, I know what the correct thing should be, but at that moment, although you're intelligent, you can produce the correct thought and the action at that moment, because of the inner noises, you weren't able to think clearly because your mind was cloudy, full of stress and other energies, either from you and from others. So the clarity of thought, again, breaks down into several factors, two of the important factors being the uh, purity of your aura and also the uh, ability to produce a clear thought form. Now, the ability to produce a clear thought form is quite secret because if we start teaching this, um, you can really misuse it, right, <laughs> in a public forum. So, so it's not really revealed. Um, but you can clean your aura by doing certain meditation techniques, chanting, all sorts of stuff, going for a walk, relaxing, all right? But that will take more time or less time, all right? So strong effort of will is clarity of thought, all right? Now, what are the types of, uh, you see, when Master Cho would, would would program, sometimes it's a little bit, um, like Sumi said, but, you know, for me, sometimes it's a, there's no drama involved, so you don't know whether it really happened or not. Like one time I, we wanted, I wanted a crystal bless. Was it me or who? Was I don't know whether I was getting done for someone or I was myself. I said, Master, can you bless this? So he just took it. He touched it like this, five years, and he gave it back. Yeah. I said, but, but, but uh, you do not say to all the niches, uh, absorb now, rigid and stabilize them up. So all that compressed, that is how clear the thought form is. That is how clear and concise the thought form is. So energy plus clarity of thought, plus aura clean, plus, plus. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, now, the, uh, what are the types of talisman? You have the general talisman. The general talisman is meant to strengthen the aura in general. All right. It's like um, what medical doctors would call crocin. You know, you have a backache, take it. You have a headache, take it. You know, paracetamol. Paracetamol or whatever. Okay, yeah. So, or Tylenol or whatever. You know, just pop it in. <laughs> There's anything wrong. So it's a general purpose. So it's to strengthen you generally. Not a specific part, not a specific organ. Just general uh, uh, strength of the aura would be increased. So if your aura is a certain amount of uh, inches, it would increase in size, which is very, very good for general purpose. And most of the time, that is enough. Now, an adopted talisman, adapted, adapted, not adopted, an adapted, <laughs> adopted one, I adopt you and now I put you in this talisman. All right. Uh, and, and That's the next one. Adapted talisman is one specially charged to meet the requirements of a particular individual, almost like a blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, what Sumi said. Now, oh my God. Oh, uh, anyway, so um, what they're talking about here is basically... Um, um, You've seen these tabis that people wear and in the Taoist tradition, you know, uh, sometimes the talisman has a particular function and usually they have a lifespan to perform that function. Um, but sometimes maybe, maybe not, but usually it's a lifespan. Like for example, I remember, I remember vaguely, so I might be wrong. Master Cho was kept giving us an example of this Taoist person. They went to a Taoist temple um, and um, they gave them something and the issue got resolved and when they uh, and he had to wear it over here then when he opened that there was a slip inside a yellow paper and when he opened it there was writing on what that what should happen so it's like a program that's been created all right by the by the wear by the wearer so you wear that okay now one time master choa he uh, to demonstrate the effect of materialization and you could call it talisman uh, an adaptive talisman uh, he wrote something on a piece of paper. He called someone with a problem to the stage, 
right? Someone had a backache or I don't know what, but no, frozen shoulder, I think, or any one, one issue like that. And he said, okay, take this paper, wrap it here, wipe it on your armpit, wipe it on your throat. It, it looks funny, right? You're wiping paper <laughs> here, here, the same paper, wipe it here on your solar plexus, wipe it on your butt, <laughs> so, uh, right? So uh, with clothes, uh, with clothes. Um, and then after that, the person could move, could move, right? And then he said, open the paper, right? He asked someone else, come on stage, open the paper. So he opened the paper, it said, heal. It said, heal. That's it, nothing, <laughs> nothing else. Yeah. I thought there'd be some, you know, uh, you know, chant inside or something, <laughs> just a <said>, heal. <laughs> All right, so that is, um, what do you call it? Exactly. Adapted talisman. All right, and then soul talisman is one designed to continue as a source of radiation for centuries. There are two varieties, uh, blah, blah, blah. Sumi's already mentioned mineral the high mineral. I didn't understand that to be ideal because when they say a fragment of high mineral, which throws out a ceaseless stream of particles, I have no idea where it's getting this ceaseless stream of particles. Because even a crystal doesn't uh, exhibit, uh, it has an aura, but it doesn't give out ceaseless stream of particles. You have to keep putting in energy and tell it to do something, right? It doesn't do it automatically. Uh, of course, it's been in the earth for thousands and millions, I don't know how long, millions of years. So it has, it is very connected to the earth. Uh, but in general, I don't know what particles they're uh, ceaselessly streaming out and where they're getting it from. So I cannot comment on this. Uh, these particles have become charged with the force stored in the talisman and the actual work of distribution done by the mineral, thereby economy. I didn't get it. Okay. So Sumi explained it better. I, I don't understand. I'm, there are too many uh, assumptions here. So the second variety is one that in which the ingredients are so arranged to make it a means of manifestation. So what is it? Like you create like a dollhouse for the, you know, you know, inhabitant to go in. What, what it could mean with the first one, ceaseless stream of particles would probably mean, you see, if you want to make a, a talisman very, very powerful, if it, it truly wants to last centuries, you have to engrave it into metal. And that metal has certain alloy. So when they're talking about a um, fragment of higher mineral, might not necessarily be only crystal. Sometimes it's an alloy. And the secret mix of that alloy is very, and, and the mix of that alloy is very, very secret. Like Master Chua created a talisman for protection. Then he created a talisman for prosperity. And each of them have a different engraving, different design. And it's a mixture of, I think, first and second variety because it had certain probably programming uh, and uh, uh, certain symbols on it, uh, which uh, brought down certain energy and through the symbol, it radiates that energy because of the symbol. You know, certain symbols are uh, attached to certain uh, beings and pools of energy. And because of that, it radiates a symbol and that might be a attractive uh, a food source for nature spirits and beings to hang around. And with their presence, um, you benefit. More than that, I'm not going to talk about. Um, and uh, such talisman may last for thousands of years to the intense delight. So maybe, maybe not. Uh, we'll have to sit and wait for, I, I've never come across a thousand year talisman, so I cannot comment on that. But uh, whether it's possible or not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I will explain why later. There's one more. There's linked talisman. Linked talisman. What is that? <laughs> Linked talisman is so magnetized as to keep it in a close rapport with its maker. You see, they have not explained the function of it, uh, of each one. So that's why it's uh, a bit confusing. How is the general one different from the adaptive? How is the adaptive one? Those two they've explained. But when they go to the next ones, they're either deliberately or just a little way. It's right? just a type. It's the means by which they make it. Maybe all the, so. the link talisman is one so magnetized as to bring it and keep it in close rapport with its maker. So that it becomes a kind of outpost of its consciousness. The wearer of the talisman could thus through its link send a cry for help. Was that there in Harry Potter? Uh, you know, what is this? Like a SOS talisman? Like, uh, you know, you give this to me when you're in trouble, uh, you know, you hold the talisman and say, uh, Beetlejuice, 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 and I'll appear. Something like that. I'm joking. Beetlejuice was a cartoon. A very, Butter very beer? Butter beer? That's something you drink. Uh, but, you know, you have this Horcrux thing also that Walmart was, uh, you know, deliberately. Uh, that could also... Well, that's not a talisman. That's something else. Mm. 
there are many, many talismans more than this. Actually, there are these talismans. When they're talking about a mixture of these last two, where I was watching a cartoon yesterday on uh, the anime. Japanese anime. <laughs> Japanese anime and it was connected to he got this ring right and this ring was connected to it just came on Netflix anyway it was connected to um, it's supposed to gather and store uh, the wearer's um, magic power or you can say energy in other words but the guy didn't have any magic power so he didn't have anything so that the 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 program of the ring started to externalize and start to take everyone else's power. The being was hungry that was in that ring, all right? It was hungry, so it started going and sucking the uh, life force and the magic power out of the friends of this guy until the grandfather came in, or so far adoptive grandfather, who had super high magic power, and he's like, just eat, and he touched it. The being became so bloated and then went back into the ring and then it's stored. So whenever the guy needed magic power, although he doesn't have it, because he has a storage device, he can use magic now. So these type of talisman, what they do is, uh, that would be pretty cool. You see, when you're strong, sometimes you're strong, everything happens in cycles. So sometimes you're very strong, but there are moments in time where you need that extra boost, where you need that extra energy, right? So what you can do is, uh, you can program the talisman to absorb some of your energy and different kinds, depending on what you uh, do it, uh, I won't explain more than that, um, and store it for a rainy day. You know, it's like savings, <laughs> you know, you don't need to. And then when you need it, you just open it out, you know, open the faucet. Anyway, we should I have talk, talked about that type of talisman. Anyway, so Master Cho had these two diamond rings. They were specifically uh, very, very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. Um, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, there's one more paragraph. Huh? More? Yeah. The, rare, the rare case of a physical talisman that yes. connected to the causal body of an adept and was adept. dubbed adept um, with those talismans buried in various countries by uh, whatever. And uh, some of the centers have been utilized. Others are employed to immediate future in connection with the work of the coming Christ. You know, I'm sorry, but I don't know if this is possible. Mm, connecting the talisman to the causal body of the adept. You see, you're forgetting a very important thing. It might sound very impressive, and I see a lot of quotes being put there um, because it sounds cool. But you have to understand, connecting the causal body of the adept, the question is, how do you connect it? How do you connect it? It's connected with a cord or a stream of energy or a program. And there is no program that lasts forever. That is the problem. It's not a problem about energy. There's no battery that lasts forever. Even the sun will run out of fuel <laughs> eventually, right? There's no unlimited energy. So the problem would be two things. Number one is if it's connected to the causal body of the adept and why the causal body of the adept, uh, I do not know. Maybe I'm not qualified enough to make a decision like this. But uh, what would uh, interest me more in all these talismans would be the issue of the program. You see, the program for it to do what it has to do has to be so strong. It's a thought form. And that thought form has to last forever. And which thought form lasts forever? Right? Even Master Cho's uh, posters last 50 years. And when we asked him why only 50 years, or when the pendant, he would give us for five years. And we said, when he said five years, he's like, what do you think? It's a battery. It runs out. Right? And there's a program. The program will, you know, uh, as the years progress would become less effective, unless you introduce another force that would recharge that program, right? Um, so I'm not sure if it's possible. Right, so. Well, the causal body is definitely a bigger body of energy compared to the lower mental or the astral body. And this is an adept who is oh, much to... more evolved. And if he's done that purely for the purpose of providing points uh, where physical creation of uh, spiritual centers happen? Maybe, I, I, I don't know. I can't it's say not, what these... It's not, as, uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. I because have not heard of it. Because it's connected. It's not that they say that they've taken some and kept How, it aside. What, is, what do you mean by connected? With a cord, with a program? Yeah. yeah. We connect with a program. Now, whose program is it? And how does a causal body uh, step down the energy all the way to physical? See, they don't say that uh, Napoleon actually created the talisman. 
he just said that he's the one who buried it. So is it the adept who actually created and gave it, gave it to him and asked him to bury it in different parts of this country? We don't know. Um, however, for me, uh, the point is that these are very specific force centers and most probably spiritual force centers. That's my assumption. Yes. And uh, this has not all been used and the rest will be used. Uh, yes. Uh, so this has got to do with what you read in Masters on the Path, the coming of Lord Maitreya. Right. Uh, so and sometimes in the Christian tradition, it's called the second, com second coming of the Christ. But you'll notice that all religions are talking about another great avatar that will descend on Earth. But then and how the issue is, how is this different from the, the consecration? Because consecration now, if you're using the word consecration, that's different. Like every temple, when it's consecrated, it's created a link. Right. To the to the being that it uh, that the temple is for. Right, so when you consecrate something uh, like a temple, maybe you're doing this. Maybe you're doing this. The sources. The, the sources. That's why the temple doesn't run out of energy. Right. That's why the mosques don't run out of energy. That's why the churches probably don't run out of energy. I was hoping but, to finish it today. Ah, finish it. Finish Not it quickly. Possible. I won't talk anymore. No. <laughs> yeah, you finish fast. I'll just say what she said. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So let's move on. Right. Uh, okay. I'm going to add a story to all the things that uh, Amit has been. I didn't mentioned. say that much. I spoke barely 15 minutes. We spoke even, eventually the same amount. 7:15. 10 to. Yeah. 10 to 7. So I took like what? Yeah. I took like 20 25 minutes. minutes. You took 20 took, minutes. I took no 15 minutes. It's all right. So uh, this is the story that Asher Dani would talk about. Now the shooting. This, yes, the gentleman uh, who made these amazing talismans back in the Philippines, and uh, he would have the talisman. He would take a hanger, put a t-shirt on it, and then place the talisman on it, right? Once he places the talisman on it, he would hang that t-shirt on a branch of a tree and then shoot at it. Now, if there were holes in the t-shirt, he knows his talisman is not ready, right? But if there were no holes, he knows his talisman is ready. And uh, this was like a vial with something in it, a liquid in it. And they, they had these uh, issues happening in the Philippines. <clears throat> Um, and uh, there was this group that actually found him and, and used his talismans to protect themselves. However, because you wear the talisman only in front, right? It hangs from your neck. It can only protect the front of your body, not the back. Yes, I mean, then I don't have to tell you the it's rest. It's like a of the hospital story. ground. Yeah. You're but in front, anyway, of yes. but back is exposed. So, so I don't have to tell you the rest of the story, but just to make you aware that, that there can be such amazing talismans. So I asked Master, I mean, Acharya, Danny, I said, uh, I said, Danny, why didn't you just go and find this person, you know, and get that program? It would have been beneficial. He says, no, the, the gentleman died and with him died the secret of how to make that palace. Yep. Not exactly, but yeah. The secret behind, one of the secrets behind that type of talisman is it's connected to the cycles of the moon. So they would have to wait for the full moon and it, it's connected to that. Okay, no idea. Master Danny, uh, or Acharya Danny didn't say all this to me, so I have no idea. But yes, too bad. But yeah. Uh, so let's move on. Now, coming back to uh, points where there's a lot of spiritual energy and uh, you'll notice that the next paragraph basically talks about where these relics of great saints and great spiritual beings, they actually create temples, shrines and other things, right? So here we go. Great shrines are usually erected on the spot of where a holy man died, Live. lived. Uh, no, there, there is that yeah, as well, yeah. yeah. And, um, where also where some great initiation took place. So if there is something like that, then there, that is where even after the person is no, no longer living, they will actually create a, a, a point so that this becomes a, a place where a lot of uh, believers can come and their devoted thoughts further makes that place uh, energized and magnetized, right? So that's basically what they're talking about it. So they say uh, the powerful magnetic center becomes an influence that has been created and can remain for thousands of years. So even the relic that is um, not so powerful, right? So they might say this is a toenail or, you know, in the Christian things, they, they say this is the shroud of the Christ. Shroud it might be uh, Turin, yeah, the shroud of Turin of, of, of the Christ. You'll notice that even though it might be fake, because for thousands of years, people have been going there and their devoted thoughts are sent towards that. That does continue to, even though it's, it's not completely real or not even that powerful, 
uh, tends to then become uh, a big, huge point of beneficial radiation, as they call it, an active center of beneficent radiation. The influence of all such places on visitors and pilgrims is unquestionably good. And so whether you, uh, especially if you're on the spiritual path, <clears throat> It doesn't matter what your religion is, but if you know there is a holy spot in a particular place, you want to go there and enjoy that amazing energy, right? And it's going to obviously bring only good back to you. So uh, to move on to the next one, it has already been mentioned that precious stones are naturally suited to be made into talismans and amulets. So we're looking at other than beads, uh, sorry, other than gems, uh, what else can be there? So we have the Rudraksha berry, uh, which I spoke about a day before. So this is frequently used, yes. Uh, they make, uh, they call it a necklace, but for me, necklace is only associated with women, so it's a little bit. <coughs> necklace in India. And its primary adaptation is to the magnetization of spiritual thought. Yes, and so very good for spiritual practices, your sadhana, your meditation, or your spiritual cultivation. And what it does is, uh, it, the disturbing influences are then kept away, right? They're kept away from you, so it becomes easier for you to have a still mind, which is important for your meditation. The beads made from tulsi plants, yes, is another example. However, the influence is somewhat different in character. They don't mention what the difference is, uh, but they just say that it's different. An interesting set of talisman are those that are also that also produce strong scent. Yes, and then they talk about the gums from trees. And so the incense that come out of them, right? So for example, frankincense is basically a resin that comes out of trees, which is used, and you and I know that. Myrrh as well. Myrrh also? Okay. It's, uh, it's from a tree, but I'm, I'm not too sure. Is it also a myrrh tree or something? Anyway, so there are these very specific ones in, in many parts of the Middle East. Uh, and this is another way basically used to further, they, they put it in, in the talisman, I understand, but we use the incense more for cleansing and purifying the space. So the gums of, the, of which incense is uh, made, for example, are chosen to be favorable to spiritual and to devout thoughts. So I think also because of its purification and probably the beings that it will attract once it purifies the place, uh, it then makes it suitable for prayers, uh, for your meditation, for other spiritual practices. It is also possible so to combine ingredients, yes, uh, as to produce the opposite effect, right? And this they say was done by the medieval witches. Uh, so if you want the opposite effect, also you can use obviously different concoctions. Like attracts like. So a trained occult or a trained occultist uh, makes a regular practice of charging many things which pass from him to others, right? Uh, with the benefic with the beneficent uh, influence. So say for example, uh, for me, uh, when, when I remember Master Choa, he would give us a letter. It might be a letter with reference to admin stuff, but even though it's typed by someone, printed by someone else, as soon as he places his hand there and he puts a signature, it literally gets magnetized with this energy. And so many of us have kept those letters. It might be just a two-liner because Master Cho was very simple, very short, clear, crisp. That's it. He doesn't write long letters to you. Thank you for all your effort. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. So even if it's just those words. Highly right? appreciate it. But yeah. those are his words. That's what he wants. And then uh, when you look at it, there, there is a difference. Can you give me that? Is it possible to show it or is it mm. not okay? Yeah, it's okay. You can show the original. No, just... So if you look at this, um, it's actually Master Cho's actual handwriting from his diary, right? That's a little poem that that's he's actually diary. written. And that's his... Yeah, so that's actually a little poem that he's written. And, uh, you know, when you read it, the impact of the same word, words, though it's a reproduction. It's in the right? second page or first page of the... His diary. The diary. Right? And so, uh, so they say, so the example is a letter, a books, diaries, uh, and also presents that you get. So I remember um, a long time ago, I, I'm, I'm, I don't come from a tradition where, you know, uh, we give people statues. <laughs> so I remember Master Cho gave me a Ganesha. And uh, I didn't know what a Ganesha was, right? Till I came to the courses and I understood more about other religions. So he gave me a Ganesha. It was in this little red ca uh, case with a transparent front and it was a silver Ganesha. And that was the first thing he gave me. And I still have it till date. 
I have no idea at that point what it was, but I'm sure when he gives it, he doesn't just give you things. He gives it with certain, uh, certain reasons, and I'm sure he's charged it before he gives us things. So he's done this many, many, many times. Yeah. Right, so he loves to give presents. I mean, that's something about my. He might take some of your stuff also. <laughs> if he doesn't like it, he'll very conveniently tell you, "Oh, the necklace is, uh, yeah. You mind if I make a few changes to it and all?" Sometimes he'll add all diamonds and stuff, extra stuff, and he's like, "Do I have to pay for this?" I'm just abridging a very, very long story, and then it's already, it's, it's, uh, you can make out that it's been blessed also. Yes. Uh, so. So which wall do you uh, cons do you place the consecrated image of Lord Mahagaruji Mele uh, on the east? Yes. So you're facing the poster. The poster's back is towards the east wall. Correct. So if the sun is rising here, right in front of you, and that's the wall, on that wall you need to place the image of the teacher or the teacher's teacher in this case. Yes. Which room in the house? Preferably if you have a puja room or a dedicated space for meditation, you can keep it there. But in some homes, because of lack of space, uh, there is no possibility. Then maybe in your bedroom, but in a small part of the room where you can only dedicate again to your practices, your spiritual practices. But the Great Vacation Post, you can keep it in your living room or anyway, uh, yeah. in the lobby. Uh, you have to see it regularly. So, yes. So some place where you don't, not like, you know, where you can <laughs> stand and say it without looking weird. Correct. And also images of your teachers, your gurus, don't place it in public uh, spots. Right, so don't keep it in your hall, though you'd love for the teacher's energy to be there. You've got to remember there are a lot of people who visit your home and then they look at this picture, for example, Master Cho is Chinese and they're like, what is this Chinese man doing in their house? You see, they, they don't realize, but the, the thought is not very positive. And whatever you send to these great beings will come back to you many, many times. So uh, let's not uh, make life difficult for people around. So let's move on. Uh, so <clears throat> it could be letters, it could be books, it could be presents. Yes, uh, by a single effort of will, he may charge even a typed letter. Oh, I didn't realize it was written here. Uh, someone missed that. Typed letter far more efficiently than it would be unconsciously charged when written by the hands of someone or uh, someone not familiar with these truths. Yes, and that I know. And uh, so I would take the liberty of actually taking, you know, Master used to write, especially through the last years of his life, he wrote a lot more books again. And so uh, whenever I would go, I mean, of course, with all my work and then underneath that, I'll keep his book and say, Master Chua, after he's finished signing all the checks and letters, I say, Master, could you also sign my book? <laughs> so, I mean, I, I didn't know how precious it was. But, yeah, I didn't know. I, I didn't get I used to, I used to have a seal, so I just sealed it. Okay. But, uh, uh, because I remember I in my someone. first prep uh, course, people would line outside Master's. It was literally uh, an ashram, so it was like a hut. They would all line up with their books to get the signature. And I had no clue. I mean, I've never done this. I've never taken even an autograph from, from an actor or anything of that sort. Uh, even in college days when girls would run behind Salman Khan and other guys would come to the hotels. So I've never really taken to that. But only later on, somewhere, I think I started to realize that there's more to Master Cho's signature. And so I got him to sign um, several of uh, the books that he has written. One thing in common that it does is it uh, hits the Ajna or the Agna Chakra. Yeah. So hopefully my understanding of that book with his signature will definitely make it easier for me to understand the teachings. Yeah. So that's probably one thing that I can that's tell nice. you. Yeah. Uh, the next is uh, similarity. Oh, we're almost mm -hmm. done. Okay. I'm just going, you want to say anything? Uh, I can skip it. The Rudraksha Berry. The Tulsi um, beads. Tulsi beads. You see, all this is, um, they have the ability to retain energy. I don't want to go into Rudraksha. Master Chua had a Rudraksha phase, by the way. So he had different phases. So when he was wearing the mala, everyone would go and buy malas. No, he gave it to us in the yeah, retreat for yeah, free. Where is it? Mine is not there. I don't know. He gave it. Anyway, so. Um, and then he went through some other phases. What was the other phase? I don't know. He had about two or three. Anyway, everyone would just copy him, especially in the States, you know. Um, yeah, different phases. And uh, the thing for us, these were all normal, wearing a shawl, wearing Rudraksha. So I don't think anybody tried to copy him here in India. So I probably didn't notice. Yeah, I noticed. I had no idea. He had all these white kurta kind of yeah, things. He, that he would wear. I, His yeah. Chinese collar thing. Yeah. So, uh, so basically, these things. Um, now, supposing if you're using it like a rosary or a mala or something, and you're saying the chants every day, it, it, if it has the ability to hold energy, it's recharging every time. 
So actually, it's almost like what I spoke about with that ring. Every time you're seeing it, you're, you're seeing it, it's having the effect, but while coming down, it's being used as a storage device. So when you put it later, you pick up where you left off or you use it as a uh, bonus energy uh, booster. Like for example, you meditate, you're putting the uh, uh, energy in your mala or in your shawl over and over again, over and over again. After a certain period of time, that energy starts to compound and accumulate. So when you put it directly on your body, it already has the effects of all of this. So instead of your crown, for example, when you meditate, the crown chakra is very important. So instead of a crown this big, it becomes this big. So the downpour is more, so the effect is more. So you're actually getting what would take you, you know, it's like a shortcut. It, you're creating, you're simulating your energy body like six months ahead, one year ahead because of the shawl. I hope you understood what I was saying. I compressed the uh, time. And the incense and all this. Yeah, this already I've spoken about the medieval witches and, and the effort of the type letter. You know, all, all Masjur's books. In fact, he would actually make a scan. Remember in the convention also, he made scan. Uh, uh, he would make, I think it was uh, Dr. Sundaram. He'd make everyone scan Dr. Sundaram in the 2006 convention when the existence of God itself, evident book came out with a small book. And scan second, edition. second edition. Yeah, and he made them scan it, uh, made them made, made, made us scan him, and then you held the book, and then the energy level went up, and then he removed the book, the energy level went down. So then uh, one of the Acharyas, while giving a talk, <laughs> he put the book in his jacket and went to talk. He's like, I mean, though, I had the book, by the way, so I'm charged while I speak. So it's a bonus, right? So your energy plus plus. So always better. Yeah, that's it. The letters and all of it. Yeah, so I think we'll continue. Uh, we should finish on Friday with this chapter and then move to the Two next more chapters. chapter. 30 pages left in the book. <laughs> yeah, uh, the next one is, uh, the chapter is called Ectoplasm. Ectoplasm. Yes, so if you haven't watched Ghostbusters, uh, please watch the movie before you come back to us. The old one, uh, the new one, watch after you watch the old one. Yeah, yeah, watch the old, old, old one from the 1980s, I think. With the marshmallow guy and all that. Yeah, stuff. So this part one part it's, it's nice to just watch some nonsense like that. It's, it's light. Uh, so before next week, not Fridays, but next week, maybe Saturday, Sunday, try after watching Master's programs or whatever, or Teacher's Day, watch that movie before you come back to us. Yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing the, the whole bit here in the chat yes. about Masters on the Path. This has got to do with the second coming or, or they say later in this century, uh, there will be a great, this century. Great, uh, great avatar that will come. But in order for this avatar to come, remember the human race has to evolve. If she does not evolve, which is all of us here and all the others there, <laughs> if we don't evolve enough uh, to the point that that date when he or she is supposed to come down will be postponed. They need a certain uh, energetic environment and they need a certain number of arhats. Also, an, uh, so yeah, both uh, that and also present. the evolution of the human race is required. Yeah. Yes, Ghostbusters. You know, when I was a kid, I couldn't say it very well. <laughs> so I used to call them the Ghost Bastards. <laughs> Sorry. I know I'm not supposed to use bad language, but <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I just knew my uncles and all would go and watch it and then I like anyway. that movie. And my uncle took me, I was a really tiny kid, I remember, and I was so scared. He took me for the nine o'clock show. When we came out, it was dark. <laughs> so, but when you went in, also it would have been dark only, right? Nine o'clock. No, sorry, not nine o'clock, a seven o'clock show. Okay. So when we went in, it was, you know, just Two uh, twilight. And then <laughs> when I came out, I was like, ah. Anyways. Thank you, Deepa. Thank you, everybody. Deepa. So um Tomorrow we have, thank you for the link, Deepa. So those of you who haven't seen the link, who haven't done this, uh, please go ahead and, and view whatever you want. It's going to be down. We're not, we, we have to figure out where to put it after this. Uh, and, um, and also your friends who... Yeah, because I'm not doing this again. <laughs> say, yes. Go and watch that video. <laughs> right. so, so a lot of your friends who you know, decided, you know, we can always do it because I assumed, uh, everyone assumed, till we found out this only this morning, uh, that this could last all the way through December. But only this morning we got this news and so I'm sharing it uh, with the group at this point. Definitely needs to be charged. Don't just wear some random Rudraks. You don't know where it has been. Yeah, it has to be charged before you... Because <laughs> the idea is since it can absorb energy, it absorbs a lot of other energies as well. Right? Yeah. Alright, so you can do the closing. Yes, so let's say a thank you and we'll end.
to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokok, Srilad Maha Guruji Mailing, to all the great ones, to all the invisible and spiritual helpers, the angels and beings of knowledge, light, and power of education, the angels and great teachers of theosophy, the angels and beings of communication, our respective Wi Fi's, and our internet connection to our soul and divine self. Thank you for your tremendous patience with us. Thank you for your light, for all the knowledge and wisdom, for a deeper and clearer understanding. Help us to continue to assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better instruments to get your work done on earth. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Atma Namaste. I've been having interesting time with Wi-Fi, but I'm glad uh, you were able to hear me all through. Both Amit and I, you could hear us without any interference. Yep. So see you on Friday. Uh, for Arhatik Yogi's reminder, tomorrow uh, is Kundalini meditation. You can come in at eight o'clock. On Friday, it's Dhyan. And on, um, on Saturday, for those of your instructors, uh, you can actually join a program for Teacher's Day, mm -hmm. which is the evening of, um, evening of the 5th of September, Saturday. Yeah, so open to instructors. You can, in, you can find out from your um, foundation more about it. Yeah. Hey, Bani, even I had a busy day, man. Why, why you don't want me to rest? Yeah, it's been a busy day. Sometimes I feel I start at 8 and I finish at 7.30 with some tiny breaks in between. Anyways, so thank you so much. Yes, um, I don't have the uh, link, uh, Virendra. You'll have to contact your local foundation. I honestly don't know uh, with all the different things happening. So we have different people taking care of different parts of all these programs that are happening. Yeah. Okay. Is there a WhatsApp group to get updates? Uh, Rupa, Rupal, sorry, what updates are you talking about? On the debris session, I don't know. I have no idea. So, anyway. All these types of sessions. Um, <laughs> well, actually, uh, the different sessions are all out. I mean, we don't have a specific area right now where we've concentrated all of them. Uh, but most of them should work through the CRM, right? So most of our programs are now through the CRM. So um, as long as it's on the CRM, you, you, can, you can check what's happening. And uh, there are a lot of messages going on Facebook. Yes. And there are lots of WhatsApp groups that have all the details of all the courses. And I'm not, and I'm not a them. part of it. No, I'm yes, so I have no part. idea which group this is. But there are many groups that have all the information. So Thank you, Vani. I shall yes. also rest a little bit. Yes, thank you. So we shall rest and see you tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock. Atma Namaste, everyone. Bon appetit. Enjoy your time with your family. Bye. Yeah, be safe. Bye. Ending for all. Bye-bye.